Hello and welcome to episode 104 of Beyond the Brick. I'm Joshua Hanlon. And I'm Matthew K. And this is our special Lego movie episode. And so I, I thought about just making a video with maybe uh, Matthew and myself just talking about the Lego movie and give, giving your, uh, you our thoughts on it. But then I thought, why not bring in an actual brick filmer who knows what he's talking about <laughs> uh, more than Matthew and me. And so... Joining us on this episode, it's really nice to have David Pickett, and longtime listeners, uh, really longtime listeners of the show will know that we had David on the show uh, back when it was an audio-only podcast uh, about over a year and a half ago now. So if you haven't heard that episode, I'll make sure to put a link to that in the description of this video so you can check that out and learn a little bit about more about David. But uh, David will be talking all about the Lego movie, and we'll be discussing some of the, the AFAL builds that were in it and some of the techniques used to create it. So, David, it's really nice to have you on the show. It's good to be back. Thanks for having me. Um, so do you want me to introduce you? Yes, you, you can go ahead and tell us a little bit about I, what you do with your, your YouTube, YouTube page. Yeah, so uh, my YouTube channel is uh, Nightly News at Nine, um, and uh, I uh, put up uh, a web series about a series of characters in the Lego world. They're a news team. Crazy stuff happens. Go watch it. Uh, and I also have been doing a lot of uh, tutorial videos there as well. Uh, but yeah, so I've been making uh, my own Lego movies for like 20 years now. Uh, the first ones were not as awesome as my current ones, and none of them are as awesome as the Lego movie, but uh, I'm very excited to uh, have the Lego movie here and be talking about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really cool, and definitely encourage you to subscribe to his YouTube page. He does a, really, a lot of really awesome stuff over there, and his tutorials as well. We were talking a little bit about that before the show. Uh, he was showing me some of his Minecraft stuff he does, so if you're into Minecraft, definitely check that out, along with all the other work he has over there. Really cool stuff. But uh, speaking of his uh, YouTube channel, one video that he posted recently was a Lego movie trailer parody that I thought was funny and really neat, the, the way he did it. Uh, I thought it was a really great idea. So you want to tell us a little bit about that, David? Yeah, sure. So, um... It, for those of you who know, know a little bit about Lego and brick filming, uh, Lego has been doing a lot of contests through this website, Tongle, in the past couple of years, where they put up like um, a, a contest and then people can enter it and possibly win money. So one of the ones they did with the Lego movie was to make fun of the Lego movie trailer. Uh, you were supposed to sweet it, which is a term from Be Kind Rewind, where you remake a trailer. So um, I was on the edge about entering, but then I, like, randomly picked up Cloud Cuckoo Land, like, two days before the deadline. I was like, oh, sure, I'll throw something together. So rather than actually doing stop motion, I just put all the Legos on, like, uh, clear Lego sticks, like the transparent uh, sticks, and then just sort of moved them in front of the camera. It's actually kind of a callback to how I used to make Lego movies when I was seven, uh, <laughs> just, like, moving the Lego figures. Let me grab a Lego figure here like moving the Lego figures in front of the camera and you'd see my hand. But this time I had transparent things so you can see them. But yeah, and like, uh, it was a lot of fun to do and it's been getting a lot of views because of the Lego movies. So uh, go check it out. Definitely. And w one thing I noticed, I, I think you might have mentioned this uh, somewhere that I that I read that you had posted this, was the, uh, you have Lord Business uh, minifig on top of the, the clear blocks and... Oh, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was kind of a callback to like... Uh, all older commercials where they would always have the the guys on the end fall off blocks, which I thought was yeah, pretty no, bad. like every '90s action figure commercial, like the the bad guys would always be on these weird clear blocks. I was like, where did you get those? I want those blocks. I don't care about the action figures. <laughs> uh, this is my I I didn't shell out for the actual Lord business, so I uh, just built him at home. Like I actually built his helmet out of. Uh, Regular Lego oh, okay. Yeah. And I have a video on my channel about how to build him without shelling out 70 bucks. Yeah, I got hit the little, uh, you know, the collectible version of President Business. But yeah, no, those blocks, I mean, I want them. I, I you know, I, I made my best out of Lego, but yeah. Basically, I just made that parody make that one joke about a 90s commercial. That's <laughs> basically what inspires all of my creative work. Mm hmm. And then the funny thing is, it's it's definitely true. You look at commercials from the '90s, and they all have have that feature kind of at the end where they launch something at the blocks, or something happens where they all fall down, and the the, the person on top always tumbles down, which is 
I've always found that kind of funny, so I thought that was pretty cool when I saw that in the trailer. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad you got it. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, now we can, we can move on to uh, kind of some more thoughts on the, the Lego movie itself. So if you just want to start off with uh, somewhat, I guess, basically your review of the movie, if you want, and things that you noticed while you were watching it. Sure. Well, um, anyone who's watching this podcast should go see the Lego movie. Like, that's all you need to know. Um, uh, I know those of you who are watching this in Australia, it doesn't come up till April. I'm sorry. Wait and then enjoy it. Um, yeah, no, it's, um, they did a really good job of, um, having a, uh, story that's true to, I think, the Lego brand, uh, you know, it's about creativity, it's about building, it's about instructions and not following the instructions, um, and what really struck me about the film is that they are, uh, really captured the Lego visual style. Um, it's a movie that's done pretty much entirely out of computer graphics, but it looks like real Lego. Um, it moves like real Lego. They basically um, built everything in Lego Digital Designer and then converted those uh, models into 3D wireframes that still look like it, even though it doesn't retain all the piece information because that would be impossible to render. Uh, anyway, this is getting super technical about the animation, but that's what really excited me as a Lego animation nerd. Uh, so it's just an amazing visual style. It's got um, you know a great heart in the film, uh, and it's hilarious. Um, I haven't seen uh, the other movies that these directors have done, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs uh, and 21 Jump Street, but now I kind of want to because this movie was so funny. So uh, yeah, it, it was really good, and uh, I you know overall I'd probably give it like a B plus. Like I I thought there were some parts that could have been improved. But um, it's pretty much everything you'd want out of a Lego movie. Uh, it's about as as well executed as you could uh, kind of I could possibly think. So yeah. yeah, they definitely checked all the boxes that needed checking. Yeah, they've got some great um, it like subtle references that only A falls will get, like some that only brick criminals will get. Yeah. Um, they uh, have a homage to like one of the first known brick films ever, the Magic Portal, at the end of the movie, which like I got, and like all the other brick filmers, like, oh my god, Magic Portal! <laughs> but like nobody else in the audience probably had <laughs> any clue what it, you know, that it was even a reference. Uh, same thing with like the couple Fabuland references they throw in there. I was like, Fabuland, like that <laughs> cracked me up more than anything else. Yeah. Um, and watching through the second time, like, I've just been like, oh, my God, NPU, NPU, look at all these, like, uh, great part uses. So uh, just as a builder, like, I'm just admiring the set design. So, like, the story could have been terrible, and I wouldn't have cared. I would have still loved the movie. But uh, thankfully, the story is actually good. So Pretty fantastic, yeah. And I think that the A-list cast doesn't, uh, doesn't hurt. Yeah, of, uh, Will Ferrell and was it Morgan Freeman? Will Arnett just uh, keeps on going. Yeah, yeah, I think that definitely fans. helped. Allison Brie as Unikitty. Yes. Oh my gosh, she's oh. put in an amazing performance. Uh, I I really uh, want all the different versions of Unikitty that are coming out in the other sets. Like there's Angry Unikitty, Space Unikitty, Seasick Unikitty. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I've only got regular Unikitty right now. I don't really want to shell out all the money for the other Unikitties, but I might just because she's so cool. Yeah. And can't forget to mention uh, Liam Neeson is good cop, bad cop was really good as well. I thought he he, he oh, had Batman. Yeah. Uh, th those were two of the, my two favorite characters. I don't know which one was better. I thought overall Batman had some of the funniest lines in the movie. I thought he was he might he might be my favorite character from it. Yeah, no, I mean, he was a, a great parody. Uh, you know, it was a great combination of, like, you know, the Dark Knight, Christian Nolan-era Batman and sort of uh, the 60s campy uh, Batman. So <laughs> yeah. uh, took himself seriously, but nobody else did. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I love uh, Go uh, ahead. Good Cop, Bad Cop definitely was, uh, had some other great moments. Like, I love how he's just always, like, kicking chairs around, <laughs> even when they're... You know, he just how he brings a chair out to kick, just uh, to, just for fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Uh, and I love the way that... At the end, he draws his face back on, his good face. Because mm -hmm. he has his, uh, what is his good, good, good is erased by uh, President Business or whatever. 
Yeah, with nail polish remover. Which I don't. Yeah. Does that actually? I don't rub think the ink so. Off of I was wondering that same thing when I saw that part. I I couldn't remember. I should have should have looked that up. But yeah, well, it's, I, it's, I'll it's acetone. This. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, I was like, well, that's kind of inaccurate. So you get n- knocked one point for that, Lego movie. I do like how they pronounced what they said. Uh, the polish remover of Nail. Yeah, uh, and and the, the knife it, of exact zero. That was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then they had Bandaid instead of Bandit. Yeah, that was some clever mispronunciation. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Should we talk about the spoilery part of the movie? Yeah, I think we can. I think most people watching this will have seen it, so I would feel free to. <laughs> All right. Spoiler All right. away. <laughs> if you don't like spoilers, stop watching right now. Uh, but yeah, so then, like, obviously, if you're paying close attention when you see, like, all these artifacts, you know, like, nail polish, you realize, like, oh, this is not, like, a Lego-specific world. This is situated in something larger. And they kind of hint at it with uh, when you're in Emmett's brain and you see the big, uh, what did they call it, like, pink sausage fingers or something like that, the giant hand, that this is all, you know, taking place in somebody's basement. And actually, the live-action parts, I thought, were um, not as well done as the rest of the movie, like, uh, I thought that it was a little Hallmark movie-y, if that makes sense. Like, uh, I, I I think that it, you know, you, you sort of needed that as a framing device for the story to work, but it just felt like the acting was not as good and the script was a little more ham-fisted there. But, um, you know, so that was, like, the one part for me that I wasn't as keen on, but I know that for a lot of people, like, that is what made the movie good. So, uh but, yeah, personally, I was not as much a fan. What did you guys think? I yeah. thought the sequence kind of... Like, I had a hard time adjusting to the fact that that happened. Like, it took me a good minute before I was, like, you know, kind of, like, fully comprehending what the, the movie... Like, the whole meaning had just kind of shifted for me. It's like... I, I, I was taken aback by the, the whole Lego town, like, layout on the tables. And for some reason, I kept trying to think, like, what club standard were those tables built to? <laughs> you know? That's what I was thinking. I was like, is that pen log tables? No, they have wooden legs. That can't be right. Maybe it's Mitch log tables. And I was just trying to think, like, who would they consult with to build those tables? And then I started thinking about all the Plano storage containers. And Right. I, just... I mean, we were all jealous of his amazing storage containers. Yes. That was a very nice... Actually, you know what I did think when I saw the basement? I thought it was, like, Dave and Stacy Sterling's, like, old... <laughs> I remember they used to post a lot of photos of their, like, Lego basement in Wisconsin. Yeah, no, they Looked definitely like have it. a famous Lego basement, so yeah. I'm sure they're the uh, design the team for that. from it? Yeah. Inspiration from real AFL basements. Oh, I'm sure, I mean, yeah. And, like, I tell my partner, like, that's my dream is to have a Lego basement. Like, yes, I have a room for Lego, but really what I want <laughs> is a Lego, Lego basement. basement. Yeah, it's all about the basement, because that's just, that's, that means you have unlimited space to do whatever you want. It's, yeah. it's, I don't know, but yeah, I that I, I was just like, I just kind of trying to take it all in, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. I felt that. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, I, I can see your point, David, how you could say that that is definitely a little bit hallmarky, like you were saying, but I guess for me, it definitely helped tie it all together, and that the kind of twist it put into the movie definitely helped for me. Uh, I think bringing it out of the, the the more animation and into the real world, I thought I thought made it really cool there at the end, and how they kind of tied that together. Yeah, no, and I think my point is not that they didn't shouldn't have had live action, but it just felt sort of like first drafty, like they should have taken another pass at the script in that section and maybe the acting, I don't know. But uh, And the other thing for me is that once you go into the real world, then like when you go back into the Lego world, you're kind of like pulled away from the characters because you're like, well, at, like at, who is Emmett and Wild Style now that I know that these are all just like being played in front of the characters? So yeah, the, yeah. I felt that it, pulled, it made the climax less impactful because then yeah, I think the, the, the articulation in that part of the movie was the only... that When I like I say they did a lot of things right, that was one of the only things they kind of could have executed a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah, it, just, it was kind of a little bit rough. Yeah, the acting was like okay, but yeah, it, I, I think it, yeah, well, a couple more once-overs, like you said, yeah. it would be a, a healthy uh, suggestion for them. Yeah. Again, it's a minor complaint. I've already seen the movie twice, and I'm planning to see it multiple <laughs> times in the theater. So yeah. that speaks for itself, right there. I guess. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so you want to talk about the uh, AFOL involvement in the movie? 
Yes, definitely. Yeah, I think we can we can talk about that now if you want. So uh, for people who don't know, I guess David, if you if you want to talk a little bit about it, there were uh, several different builds uh, featured throughout the movie uh, that were built by fans of Lego. So if you want to just point out a few that you noticed throughout it. Yeah. So the main thing I was looking for going in is um, Re- Rebrick did a uh, animation contest. Uh, few months before the movie, I don't know exactly when it was, like last year, um, so that animators would make a little segment of somebody rebuilding a set into something else, you know, sort of what they do in the climax of the movie, and that they might include it. Um, And so they had, like, I think five or six different ones that they actually included. They're all sort of, like, you see them for, like, literally, like, two seconds in the movie. So blink and you'll miss them. They're... In the Climax Lord business, uh, he has, like, a display screen. It has, like, a split screen of four different things happening in the world. Like, that is all done by, like, actual Lego animators. And, again, blink and you'll miss it. But it, it's in there. It's cool. You know, uh, my good friend David Pagano did one of a garbage uh, truck turn into a giant monster, which is a really cool animation in its own right. Well, it's funny because each of these animations is, like, 30 seconds long, and they literally took, like, one to two few seconds of it, so, uh, and then, uh, that Rebrick link you have, uh, also showed, like, Bruce Lowell did some designs, the donut that's in the live action scenes, the hot dog, which is in the credit sequence, which actually was one of my favorite parts of the movie, was the credit sequence, uh, just because it's really well animated with, like, uh, butter coming down from the butter machine onto the popcorn and <laughs> stuff like that. Oh, hey, you pulled up the image. Yes, yeah, here's the photo. If you aren't familiar with I think all four of these builds were featured in the movie, so throughout different, a lot of them in the credits, I know. Yeah, uh, the taco was in Taco Tuesday, <laughs> and the skull and the hot dog were in the, the credits, yeah. I did uh, see the donut in the, the, the end sequence, and I was just like, I knew exactly what it was. Bruce was <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, like, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Know, I didn't really pick up on too easily, but... How they how his stuff got in there? Whether he did a contest or they just contacted him because his stuff is so awesome. I'm sure uh, the latter. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, hey, Bruce, Bruce, you want to contribute some stuff? He's like, oh, okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. I, another thing that I I think was in there was this is a build by Chris Malloy. Uh, his I think this was over the sequence when uh, the good cop, bad cop character was giving like a history and they they were showing different images and I think they showed his build there during that. I'm going to have to watch the movie a third time just to see that in it, but uh, yeah. (laughs) So there were a lot of really cool uh, A-Fall featured builds there, but yeah, it's it's something that you have to probably see it. If you've only seen it once, you probably uh, did not catch a lot of these, so it's something you have to watch it multiple times, definitely go back and see it a few more times to catch all of these really cool builds. Yeah, there's so much stuff going on in the background of that movie. The second time I watched it, I was literally just like, okay, Dave, don't look at the main part of the screen. Look at a corner and focus on whatever's there because that's where something cool is going to happen. So, like, uh, in the cowboy bar, I noticed, like, on the wall above the stairs, there are, like, Fabuland heads mounted on the wall. Like, I totally missed that the first time, but then I saw it the second time. I was like, oh, my God, that's so awesome! (laughs) Which, you know... just a background detail, but to me it was, like, the coolest thing. Uh, or, like, there's, um, during the chase sequence where they have, like, the car driven by pigs and then they go to the train, like, a pig falls off, like, the side and then explodes into the little Lego sausage pieces. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's, that was one of my favorite things is when they would do, like, brick-built effects. So, like, when Unikitty is really excited and, like, the stars and magic wands come out of her. Um, or just, like, any time there was smoke or an explosion, I was just like, I want to go through this frame by frame and see how the, what pieces are used there. Um, yeah, the animation was just really phenomenal. And then Unikitty, at the end, when she gets, like, angry, then she has these, like, amazing, like, brick-built faces that are only there for, like, again, like, half a second. But, like, um, she just, like, chomps things out of these giant brick-built faces. So just so many cool details to, to watch for every time. It's definitely worth a couple of viewings. I would... Have you seen it twice? Or? I've only seen it once, and I'm totally planning to see it next week, so... <laughs> yeah, I've only seen it once as well, but I definitely definitely plan to see it again sometime. Oh, it's one yeah. of those that... <laughs> like you said, I mean... What was, just like, so... the favorite thing you noticed just watching through it the first time? 
Uh, let's see, I'm trying to think here now. <laughs> so much cool stuff in it. Uh, I'm off the top of my head. I'm trying to think of one like r- really awesome thing that stood out to me. Um, I guess uh, in in the lower business layer, kind of kind of, uh, and this isn't even completely Lego uh, built built stuff, but he kind of had some like the, some of the real world stuff, like the band aid and stuff like that. Uh, I thought that's that stuff was kind of cool. Some of the stuff on the pedestal, and I there were a lot of it was quick shots, so I didn't even have time to see everything there. But that's something I would keep an eye out for again in the second time around. I think the one thing I liked was when they would pan to the ground and you'd see like uh, how everything was kind of tiled. Like they had mm-hmm. these really funny tiling patterns where they had six by six light blay tiles, six, six by six, six light tiles, blade, yeah. surrounded by two by two light blay tiles, and just uh, like I just could only imagine what the conversation was. Well, how do you want to do the roads? Well, do you think we should? Yeah, just do that. Or, all right, well, we'll just do it that way. And I just I love, love the, seeing the rendering and just all of that. I love the opening shot where it's like going through the like canyon of magma, and you can see the outlines of all the base plates because like even though it's a giant magma sea, they still <laughs> obey the laws. <laughs> How big a base plate is? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And not that base plates come in that color, but we'll we'll give them a pass on that one. But uh, mm-hmm. I did like that they're they're pretty faithful to Lego colors. I, I don't think they played around too much. Yeah. No. I mean, the lava was a Lego color, but I don't think the base plates come in transparent orange. Yet. Yet. Yeah. Uh, when when they went to the Wild West sequence and they had all the cacti, what color was that? Was that olive green? I think that's sand green. Sand you know, green? Okay. That, I think I the know, lighting kind of had me thrown off for a bit. I don't know how we started calling colors sand color <laughs> in the Lego world. It's such a weird pal- part of the palette. Um, yeah. It should be like muted green or like, I don't know what, what a better terminology would be. There are yeah. too many greens, I decided. The there other are day. quite a few greens. Because we've got regular green, sand green, dark green, Olive green, bright green. Oh, lime green. Lime green, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, six greens. And there's probably like some green. more obscure greens that we have yet to hear of. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's a lot of green. I guess there's a lot of green in the world, you know, when you think about it. Dark green, like, you know, that's, that's buildings and then. I'm just saying, like, foliage. you should go back to when there were like six colors. That's all you need. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I think that that actually brings up a very good point. Some of the reviews of this movie, they kind of criticize like how Lego has kind of evolved from where it was when, you know, like back in the 70s or 80s when it was just basic bricks and six colors. Uh, what, what kind of uh, what, how does that make you feel when you hear uh, like critics saying stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, I have a whole spiel about this. Uh, so thanks for asking. Yes. Uh, you know, I think that in many ways, uh, you know, in the Lego fan community, we talk about the dark age. You know, you play with Lego as a kid, uh-huh. then you stop when you're a teenager, and then you pick it up again, like, maybe when you're in your 30s and you have kids and you discover it again. You know, some of us, like me, never had a dark age, maybe, like, it's sort of a dim, you know, like, light play age. Light play <laughs> <laughs> Like, I never got rid of Lego. Yeah. I never really stopped playing. I, you know, I, I started using it for animation so I could justify it as art, um, <laughs> and that helped me through. But I feel that, like... There's sort of a parallel trajectory that, like, our culture is, has gone through with Lego and that it's now coming out of its cultural dark age as, like, knowing that Lego is around. Like, nobody was paying attention to Lego in the, like, 80s through the 90s, aside from, you know, like, buying it for kids. Whereas now it's, like, with the movie, with, like, all of its splashy media properties, it's really come under public scrutiny in a lot of ways, you know? Oh, yeah. We saw this with the launch of the Friends line, uh, oh, where like goodness. the internet exploded with uh, rage and uh, you know other emotions. Uh, I wrote a very lengthy article about that, um, and uh, so I think with the Lego Movie, people are like, "Oh, I remember Lego from way back when, and now it's totally different," and they don't have any sort of sense of like what are the intermediate steps that it went through, or like. How terrible Lego was in like the two thousand, yeah, early two thousands, yeah, like. Yeah. Right I, I can like remember like going to Toys R Us wanting to buy Lego, and there only being like a quarter of half an aisle devoted to it, like just just nothing, because the amount of products they're putting out, well, and, and there, nothing was selling, or you know, just just whatever problems they're going through. Like, and there's just, like they make fun of Fabuland in this film, but there are so many worse themes to make fun of, like oh, yeah. Galador. Jack yeah. Stone. 
Jack's I read a, phone. I read no, an article the other that. day about uh, that just uh, all the Lego themes that almost killed Lego. Yeah, so they talk about Galador. You talk about uh, yeah, like Jack Stone. Uh, there's yeah, Scala you know, or Scala, however that one's pronounced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scala. There you go. Yeah, Scala, Scala. Um, I like how did they say uh, Primo is another one that that wasn't terribly lucrative. Yeah. I don't know. So, I mean, yeah, I, I feel like, yeah, Lego um, is different than it was then, but it's actually doing pretty well. And, like, if you compare Friends to Belleville, Friends is not that offensive. No. <laughs> you know, relatively, <laughs> it's oh, still no. not the best, but uh, Lego has done a lot worse. Um, so, yeah, I think there's definitely sort of, like, a cultural, like, dark age where they just don't even, nobody's even aware of that time period. Uh, which, you know, it sort of behooves us to tell people, like, no, like, you have to understand the trajectory, like, it's been much worse. <laughs> you don't know Lego, man. You don't know anything. Yeah, yeah and I, I feel like, um, you know, since their turnaround after 2003, they've actually done a better job of using um, a smaller palette of pieces. You know, they definitely have uh, more types of pieces than they did, you know, when it was just rectangles. But, you know, like, every year I'll be like, oh, these are the new pieces they have this year, because I see it in, like, every set. Like, the one-by-one one round tile came out a couple of years ago or whatever. Yeah, but it and, appears in everything. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, like, they, they have some variety. And, like, I don't know. Like, there's, there's, like, no piece that's so specialized that it can't be used for multiple things. Like, that is, like, who's that person who did that contest, who would run those contests, like, just to prove that a point, a piece was not... One use only. It's in a. Uh, I don't know my a fools very well. I'm trying to think. I think I know what you're talking about, but yeah, I can't remember. Like the one of them was, uh, you know, the hand cart piece. That's like the red hand cart, and like you would think, okay, like, oh, yeah. this is just for a hand cart. Like I did a deck chair in his contest, and somebody made like a giant dragon out of them. Um, you know, there's no Lego piece that can't be uh, used with other things. Like I. Uh, one of my favorite things at um, Brick World Chicago every year is uh, Dirty Buildster, where you trade, you know, a hundred terrible parts to somebody else, and you get a hundred parts, and you have to build something out of, like, you know, like somebody will put only, like, a, a tire and not a wheel, or only, like, a window <laughs> frame. Literally, yeah. there's no way to connect this unless you have that other piece. Uh, and, like, I got a bunch of, like, clickets and... Uh, uh, Modulex, even, uh, and uh, it's always fun to, like, okay, I've got a bunch of random pieces that shouldn't make anything. How can I make something coherent out of it? Uh, well, because you can do like, something. Yeah, you can always do something. So, uh, you know, haters going to hate. Lego is awesome. It's true. Yeah. It's true. yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, yeah, and I, I think you see that, I mean, see that with a lot of non-Lego things as well, where people just remember stuff from their childhood or whatever, and then when they see it as an adult, it's like, oh, this is this has changed, and without really looking into what, what made it the way it is today, they're just, it's not how it was as a kid, so it must not be good anymore. And I think my other point to that sort of argument is that you can buy creator sets, you know, you can buy basic... Buckets. Oh yeah, they still produce the same. Like I mean, you look at the creator sets; they're fantastic, and they're yeah. they're uh, you know mostly unisex, mostly uh, you know very common parts, and they're wonderful. And they encourage builds. multiple builds with yes. it being one. Yeah, of course. And then if you buy you know the specialized sets, then you can go and take your creator pieces and do something extra fun. So I mean, everybody wins, I think, with the the current assortment of products. Oh. Yeah, and anybody to, to give that argument, the whole gender segmentation, I think you should blame Hasbro and blame Mattel for starting that 50 years ago. And, you know, like Barbie's been, I mean, blame Barbie if you're going to say Friends is bad. Barbie's horrible, you know. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, they're saying that, but, you know, Lego has to beat them at their own game if, uh, if they want to continue to survive. Yeah, no, I mean, I actually did an article where I specifically compared Mega Bloks Barbie to Lego Friends in terms of, like, pieces per set and, you know, the gender roles represented. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it's easy to uh, knock Lego Friends because it's, like, the most visible of this, but it's like, yes, other toy companies are putting out even worse products. Yes. Uh, so let's, let's point our pitchforks in the right direction. Tisk, tisk.
Well, now an, another bit of controversy surrounding the Lego movie that I thought uh, we could get your thoughts on is the, the kind of anti-business uh, side of it that a, a lot of people, uh, so much has been written about the Lego movie reviews and articles and stuff. Some of them have been pointing out that uh, that there's some anti-capitalist anti yes, propaganda. Anti -capitalist. Anti <laughs> that's I believe true. that's the buzzword. Yeah. 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 Um, so. Yeah, I think that at a surface level, especially in the beginning parts of the movie, like that seems like the conflict, but that's not collectivist the conflict. society. Yeah, but uh, you quickly realize that that's really not the central tenet of the story. Yeah, and I mean, like, uh, I think the movie traffics in parody a lot, so there's nothing that it doesn't make fun of. So, you know, it's making fun of, uh, you know, crass consumerism with, you know, the people of Bricksburg's all dancing to one song over and over again. But it's also making fun of, like, wildly creative people with, like, the fact that the master builders build this, like, weird submarine that doesn't actually work because they don't know how to collaborate, and they just, like, get... You know, spaceship, 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 or you know, sparkles. <laughs> uh, you know, everybody's just too focused on their own thing. You know, and I think uh, there's a lot of different ways to talk about what the central story of the Lego Movie is. Like people say, oh, it's about not a father and a son being creative. But I think the key message is really about collaboration. It's about how hard it is to like actually build something meaningful with somebody else because it's very easy to just do things the way you want them to. And that's like Lord Business's mistake is like doing his own thing to the exclusion of everybody else, not that he's, you know, running a business because he's not. You know, in the end, Lord Business is not even a real character. It's just a stand-in for this guy's dad and we don't know anything about the guy's dad, like what his actual job is. So, and then it's not anti-capitalist because it is like the most perfect expression of like commercial enterprise ever. It's like uh, totally underwritten by a gigantic multinational corporation, which is what the number one toy producer in the world. Didn't it surpass Hasbro? Or I'm not sure if it's surpassed yet. Or maybe it's number two. Maybe it's, it's number two. It's a healthy number two, getting yeah. ready to be number one. Maybe Mattel is number one. I don't know. We should look up I don't really follow the business of toys, despite being a Lego fan. I only care uh, about Lego, you know. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, oh, and, and at the beginning of my movie, there was uh, a preview for Creo. Uh, yes, there was, was in mine, too. I thought that was kind of funny. I wonder how much yeah. they paid for that. Yeah. And, and right, and so, like, and the fact that I also had to sit through, like, Previews for annoying pop songs while I was waiting for my movie. It's like, yeah, like <laughs> I had to sit through. There was a, a Google Chrome like Lego, you know, the Google Chrome like you can build in Chrome now, mm -hmm. like L LDD. There was a preview for that. I thought that was a, a pretty uh, well yeah, placed that one ad. Actually, had the Lego Movie branding on it, so that one was like, oh, okay, they legitimately wanted to partner with this. Whereas Hasbro just paid enough money to get Creo in there. So yeah, yeah it is not anti-business. It, it it is making money hand over fist. Oh, yeah. the end. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> For sure. And getting back to your point about the, the, the central theme being like collaboration, I was actually re reading a really good article today about, uh, I forget the name of the guy who wrote it, but he was talking about how he builds with his five-year-old daughter and uh, a few, she, she had just gotten into Lego a few months before they saw the Lego movie together, and he was kind of, tur kind of turning into the, the Lord Business type mm -hmm. guy, and I don't know if you've read this article or not, but... Was uh, this the one where the daughter wanted to take the roof off the RV? Yes, yes, and, like, yeah. He wouldn't let her? Yeah. Yes. I think it was in the grade. Uh, yeah, I, okay. I've read a lot of reviews of the movie, so I, I caught that one too, yeah. <laughs> no, it was a good point, like, that's why this movie sort of hits home at the end, is it's because you realize, oh, like... This is, it's not some big president business. It's just like a normal dude who's obsessed with Lego and is being too protective of it so that his son is not able to play with all the cool stuff. You know, so I, I, in I, the I, end, does it, does it really become a story about a father and a son? Is that, you think that's really what it's about at the end? I, I mean, like, this is what one of my problems with the ending is that it's like, well... It, kinda, it, it sort of takes a whole storyline and kind of wipes it to the side in favor of, you know, like, hypersimplification, I guess you could say, maybe? Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know, because it's like, but then, like, all the characters that we saw before that had their own struggles, which aren't really reflected in that. So is that, like, internal to that kid's imagination, or is that, like, do these characters have their own sort of agency in some way? Because, like, Emmett moves in the real world. 
that's really weird, right? Like, and <laughs> not enough people have been talking about how weird that is that that's no, in no, there. No, 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 on the yeah. desk, yeah, yeah. He's pulling a Toy Story on us, but um, <laughs> but it's not. I it's I don't really understand what they're trying to say with that, you know. Uh, so. You know, I feel like a lot of the movie, you know, they embrace just throwing random things together, a.k.a. being a master builder. So the fact that the plot is also random things thrown together, you know, they kind of can get away with. Yeah, I think it kind of speaks to how most media properties kind of function today. I, I, I Randomness is kind of like a pattern across, like, most everything I watch. You know, you watch Tosh.0, oh, that's pretty random, but that's meant to be random. And even, store, like, you know, shows with a storyline, I, I think Adventure randomization... Time. Yeah, Adventure Time. Exactly. This, this, this randomization is kind of like the, the new thing. So I, I guess it's just playing off of that. I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good point. And I think to, to finish out the, the interview then here, uh, they just announced today, I think, uh, or the, this week. Legoland. The, uh, um, that, that too, they announced that as well. But um, oh, what I was going to say was the, uh, the sequel, Lego Movie 2. They announced yes. the day. It's coming out in 2017, I believe. Oh, they announced the date. I hadn't heard yes, that. Yes, they did. It was uh, April or May. I can't remember. Uh, in 2017. So it's, it's a while he's off. Yeah, but 2017. I, <laughs> I do not envy whoever has to make that because it's going to be really hard to follow this up with a meaningful sequel because it's sort of a self-contained story. Like... You, yeah. We've learned the lesson, uh, and you know, I don't know that it would even make sense to revisit these characters again. So I, I'd be, you know, they sort of kind of set it up for a sequel in the end, maybe, but I think that was more just an end joke, you know, like when the Duplos yeah. come down, which was hilarious. <laughs> that was really good, yeah. Yes. And I really like that part. But um, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so I was just going to ask you, is there any you know, characters or anything in particular that you really want to see in the sequel? Is there something you think would be really good for the second one? Well, you know, um, there's this uh, really good brick film by Garrett Barati called uh, Play Nice. It's not Play Well. That would have been you know, too obvious. Uh, but it's about a brother and a sister like, who are both playing with Lego, um, but, and they play in different ways, and they're like trying to get, and their dad's trying to make them get along. Um, but, it, you know, it ends up with, like, the girl has, like, all these wizards and fairies, and then the boy has all these, like, dinosaurs and robots, and then just end up fighting, and it's awesome. Um, so, you know, I'd love to see something like that in the big scale to, like, think about it as, like, a sibling relationship movie, because they do talk about the sister, and it would be nice to maybe explore that dynamic if they're sticking with the same family, but I don't know. You know, like, uh, as long as the animation style stays the same and they don't just retread the same ground, I think it'll be good. But uh, we'll see. Mm-hmm. So Definitely like it, something to look forward to. Yeah. The, if, they, if they mess with the animation style, would that be like the big thing that would really hurt it in your opinion? Like, would, would make it not... Yeah, if they make it like the animation that they use for like, like Ninjago and Legends of Chimas, where all the characters move in non-Lego ways, I will not see it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, would be, that would be a kill for me. Is it also worth talking about the the Legoland, the what is it, the live, like the Lego movie experience? I'm not sure what the, the title of the That opened was it today or yesterday? Yeah, something like that. I, I saw some some news about that today. They did open like a new part at Legoland California, I believe, related to the, the Lego movie. And it's oh. all it is is just like the the set that was used to film the live sequence at the end. So it has like the city and all of the you know storage drawers and I saw a bunch of photos circulating of the boy the the Will Ferrell's like the co-star mm-hmm. at the end and he was there like oh. at the event so I suppose they couldn't book Will Ferrell for the opening. <laughs> I'm, I'm, no offense to uh, you know the little gentleman's uh, acting prowess but uh, you know I'm sure he Will Ferrell commands a pretty hefty price tag for these type of events. Right. So. But I guess that's at Legoland, California, so if you're in that area of the country or planning to visit, that would be something to check out. Yeah, there's also the video game, and I think there's probably a novelization and a coloring book. So. And another wave of sets coming out soon, too, right? Yeah, oh my god, I'm so excited about the spaceship. The um, spaceship was like everybody said, yeah, 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 oh my goodness. A, a certain buy for any a Yeah. That's... Classic space is back, just, just for a little bit. Uh, the pirate ship. Well, the pirate ship, I think, is out now, right? Like it's. Yes, I, I have heard people so. building it. Yes, yes. 
And it's got um, the, uh, the, was it the Technic kind of, like, for the sails, instead of having, like, cloth, it, it uses... I like how metal. if we talk about a Lego pirate ship, the first thing we analyze is what material the, the sails are made of. Of course, but of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it, it looks like a, another nice range of products there. I, I'm pretty happy with all of that. No yeah, they did, they did a good job. Good work. Very good work. Uh, all... Lego designers who worked on those products, because I mean, it's like their regular design team. Like uh, Matthew Ashton, I know, is executive producer on the movie, and he oversees their play themes. And I, I, I would imagine was in the credits. More than any movie ever, this would probably have a, like an incredible tie-in to like you know the product team, like as as opposed to just like saying, oh well, what what's the creative? What are you guys going to be doing? All right, well, we'll make sets based off of that. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, we're going to make a movie, so then the, you know, I would imagine there's a lot more collaboration going on there. So. Yeah, and in some of the reviews, they talked about how like they let the directors write the movie and then made sets based on it, but there was definitely some back and forth because like definitely like some of those big sets they had to have like actual Lego designers working on that. Like, oh yeah. Um, to get into the movie, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure it was like more like make it us an awesome giant pirate ship, and then we'll put it in the movie. So <laughs> yeah, lots of collaboration there. Definitely. So yeah, we'll definitely be looking to the forward to the second one as well. It's a few years out here, but uh, plenty of time to look forward to it, I guess. Same Just keep rewatching the first one until the second one comes out. Mm-hmm. I'd say. <laughs> As soon sure. as it's out on DVD, I'm just gonna like literally sit there and like <laughs> click the button to go forward <laughs> frame by frame. You think I'm joking? Just about freeze that. frame the whole film, you know? Just just review everything in great detail. Uh, it's not a bad idea because there, there is a lot going on in all those sequences. So. Yeah, and all, the editing's so fast. You, 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 oh yeah, it just time. cuts scene, 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 scene. So. You definitely need to post a video of yourself sitting there going frame by frame so you can people can watch you as you examine it and get all the, the little details that they didn't pick up on. <laughs> For sure. Very cool. Well, it's been great having you on the show, David. Is there anything coming up that you want to tell people about or anything else that uh, you want to make people aware of? Um, Brick World Chicago is cool. That's in June. That's like my next big thing. I'm sort of in between animation projects right now just because the last one took like three years to make and I need some time to like be a human again. There you go. <laughs> and in the meantime, subscribe to David's YouTube channel. I'll always say that. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> and this channel too. <laughs> and this channel. Oh, thank you, David. We go. appreciate that. <laughs> Definitely. So subscribe to David's YouTube channel for sure and check out his tutorials. Like we mentioned at the beginning, some really cool stuff going on over there. And yes, you can subscribe to the Beyond the Brick YouTube page as well and keep up to date with all our latest interviews. And David mentioned Brick World Chicago. I think we'll be there again this year. So we'll post some interviews with uh, builders there as well. So if you, if you don't subscribe, you might miss out on those. So you don't d- definitely don't want to do that. <laughs> So definitely encourage you to subscribe to keep up with all our latest videos. And we appreciate everyone watching. We'll see you next week.